as I understand, uh, Mr. Prime Minister is happy to take your questions. Yes. Um, other questions in the audience? Uh, as you think about it, maybe I, I start out. Um, you mentioned as, at the outset the importance of new media and IT for the spread of information, for transparency, and for the fostering of the democratic movement in your country. Um, we have seen this in other places. We have also seen that by means of information technology, uh, social uh, momenta of a bad kind have developed uh, yeah. under the um, uh, uh, fake news uh, uh, agenda. So the question for you is how do you want to deal with this as a ruler? There are countries uh, that uh, deal with it in a very restrictive manner. don't want to mention examples. And uh, this is obviously not the ideal way to balance the technological uh, potential and the transparency with the potential of abuse and uh, bad movements in the sector. Thank you very much for that question. Uh, you know, to be honest, recently we, uh, we were dis uh, discussing this topic of fake news with the, uh, with the uh, leaders uh, from worldwide in Davos. And uh, all we accepted that we, uh, we have no idea what to do with this problem. But, uh, but you know, uh, for uh, countries like, uh, like Armenia, with, um, you know, with uh, uh, young democracy, I think uh, the, um, uh, the protection of right of expression and free speech is more important than uh, to try uh, to protect government from fake news. Uh, you know, uh, I, I would be honest, uh, fake news now is a very big problem for all government um, uh, of all countries. Uh, but uh, and uh, for our government and for me personally too, because we have now in Armenian social media a huge amount of fake news about me personally, about my family, about uh, my government, about our uh, our uh, political team, about current situation in Armenia. But you know, um, uh, it would be very wrong temptation for us to try to use our, our, our authority to restrict uh, any, kind of, uh, any kind of right of expression in order to, uh, to um, prevent, uh, prevent our audience from fake news. I think that uh, the better way to do that is um, um, uh, the same, education. Uh, I think this situation, many people uh, now see what, what's going on. Uh, I, I'm, not, uh, uh, I'm not sure what part of people um, uh, understand uh, uh, the, uh, the importance of problem of fake news, fake news what, what part of people um, uh, don't understand. But I think uh, in the process, uh, people... Uh, will, uh, will uh, gain uh, uh, ability to differentiate fake news from real news. And I think it, uh, it should be done like that, through the experience, through the education, through the informational education, through technological education. And of course, uh, I think researchers uh, will uh, think about the technologies that will uh, protect society from fake news without restricting a right of expression and free speech. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm happy that you say this in this place at the University of Applied Science because I think we all agree our understanding about the role of research in education or research-based education as such is of course that this research leads to new things and maybe discoveries and maybe useful uh, invent, uh, inventions, but as a main asset, research-based education should provide young people with the skill 
with the lifelong skill, if possible, to be able by themselves to tell apart the truth from the lie, the more probable from the less probable, by having the methodological approaches to, to criticize whatever they hear, whatever they learn, by whoever there is or whoever there seems to be. Further questions? Beforehand, the risk report was uh, published, uh, raising issues like you've mentioned digitization, but also climate change. Now, I'm aware that Armenia is not only a beautiful country, has a rich culture, but also has some in, in, uh, impacts of natural hazards especially. Do you see connections of the topic of climate change and also digitization and all the new technologies as an opportunity also to create markets in economy? Thank you. Yes, of course, because, you know, uh, m many people perceive uh, new, technologies, uh, new to technologies as, uh, as enemies of, for environment and for uh, protection of environment. But uh, it, it can be, it, uh, this, this perception has a part of truth. But uh, uh, on the other side, uh, technologies, new technologies, uh, allow us to solve the environmental issues. And to be honest, um, um, uh, thanks to new technologies, now we uh, are aware about, about the scale of the um, of the issue of uh, climate change and environmental issue, etc. In Armenia, to be honest, uh, we have uh, the huge problem of recycling the, uh, the garbage. And um, now we are uh, searching for investment on that field uh, because we need to, um, um, uh, to um, uh, clean up our country because, uh, because unfortunately, um, uh, we have no uh, recycling technologies in our country implemented. And uh, the other issue is to uh, increase the, uh, the demands uh, from the mining sector in our uh, country because, unfortunately, our environment was uh, hugely damaged uh, from uh, mining sector. And uh, now we are going to increase and, and establish very high standards on, uh, on um, environment and uh, uh, very high environmental standards uh, on mining sector. And uh, we hope that uh, we will uh, be able to do that uh, with help of technologies. And uh, it's very important not only implement and um, create and establish standard, but to have uh, control on implementation process, and for that also, uh, new technologies will, would be very useful. Thank you. I think I can allow one more question, because that's what the schedule dictates. Yes, please. Wait, wait for the... Western languages. Excuse me, could you repeat? Yes, of course. Um, I assume that until 30 years ago, everybody had to learn Russian as a first foreign language at school. Uh, how far spread are Western languages like English in your country? You know, uh, um, actually, we have many schools uh, where uh, um, um, children um, uh, study Russian, English, French, German. In Armenia, we have uh, 200, 200 schools school, uh, with, uh, with the German language uh, in the education program. Uh, I think that uh, we will have uh, a little more or uh, no, we, we, have, we have Russian language in all our schools, but we have uh, um, uh, um, other languages in all our schools too. Uh, I mean, uh, we have four, 200 uh, schools with German language, maybe um, uh, more with English, French. We have now um, um, uh, we have now some uh, some schools with Chinese, 
with Iranian language, with Georgian language, and it is, you know, it is very important task for new Armenia. I, um, I announced that uh, the citizens of contemporary Armenia should know uh, at least three foreign languages. And I think uh, it, it is our strategy to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to have uh, more and more people with more and more language knowledges. Thank you. I think we could dream of such a situation here in our country. <laughs> so I'm very uh, unhappy to cut this short, but due to your schedule, Mr. Prime Minister, we have to finish this session. Let uh, us thank you uh, very warm again for this very illuminating speech and for the uh, uh, nice discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.